Hey guys, it's Judy from Nutrition with Judy. Bart K is a former senior lecturer in human physiology and a professor of health science. Bart worked in academia for several decades as a teacher, a publishing researcher, and as a consultant. Pleasure, Judy. First of all, thank you very much for having me back again. It's always a pleasure to talk to you and to your people. And if you're not subscribed to my channel as well, folks, do consider going across there and subscribing. We're looking at an image of the, um, the discoverer or the proposer, if you like, of the Randall cycle. This is Sir Philip Randall, 1926 to 2006. And he proposed the Randall cycle in an article which was published in April of 1963. Why is this so important, Judy? Well, this is important because there are a number of commentators currently running around on the internet suggesting to people that it's a really good idea on the carnivore diet for you to add in an amount of carbohydrate every day for various reasons. The Randall cycle suggests a number of things to us, including the absolutely unequivocal means definite the definite reason why that is absolutely, definitely contraindicated, which is another word for don't do that. It is bad for you. Basically, the way we need to view carbohydrate in the diet is we need to view it as what it is, and that is it is a toxin. For the last four and a half million years, give or take, humans and immediately pre-human species have lived on this planet under a given lifestyle, that lifestyle being obligate hypercarnivore. How do we know that is true? What we can do is a thing called stable isotope testing. What we can do is we can find the human and, and immediately pre-human remains. There are skeletons, skeletal structures, long bones that are left behind. We can find those all over the world. And we can open those long bones up and we can get some collagen out of those bones. Collagen is a protein. It's the most common protein in the human body. And you'll find a significant amount of collagen in long bones. Collagen is a very stable protein. It dries out, obviously, after the body dies, but it remains intact for tens and hundreds of thousands of years. No problem at all. We can still find viable collagen in the long bones millennia later, even. And we can analyze the makeup of that collagen in terms of the stable isotope makeups, in terms of the carbon and the nitrogen found in that collagen in those long bones. And that tells us, slam dunk, it tells us what that individual definitely ate during its lifetime, down to the specific speciation of animals that that human being was predating on and eating. And what that data tells us is that human beings, for at least 350,000 years, which is as long as human beings have existed in our current form, we have definitely unequivocally eaten a diet which consisted 80% the flesh and fat of large ruminant animals, with a few other animals thrown in here and there, and 20% very, very fibrous, very, very starch, poor roots and tubers, basically very, very fibrous materials. And that 20% of fibrous materials was stuff that we were digging up, collecting, taking home, boiling the hell out of probably, and eating as some kind of gruelly slop type stuff to subsist when the hunt was unsuccessful or the animals were not there to predate upon. Okay, and it wasn't starch rich like current tubers and roots are that have been selectively bred to be so. 